put on the rose. There's some, a bunch of information in there. Dr. Alcott, yes. and that for you. And then, of course. Yeah, like good whenever, guys. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for coming out. Uh, we are Team Rota Strana here to present Camp Plus. We're very excited to, to show you what we have. Uh, but I'd like to take a moment to actually welcome uh, Ben Comer and Kate Lala, our clients here today. So I'm Judson Clark. I've been the project manager and team leader as well as the SQL developer for our software. My name is Simon Anderson. I handle development of the graphical user interface. I'm Tony Lagry. I work with how the user interacts with the software. I'm Travis Evermar, and I worked on some more of the back end stuff. Okay, so first of all, of course, we want to re-explain what is Camp Plus. Camp Plus is a camp management assistant. The intention is that for people that run a summer camp, they need multiple, they have multiple tasks in, in the administration of their camp. For instance, the attendees that will be there or the staff, they need some way to administrate them, know who's coming. Uh, there, there's also going to be an event scheduler. They need to know what events are going on in their camp, as well as also group management to be able to handle putting campers into groups. Behind all that, we've developed some really powerful tools to support these modules. For our custom event calendar, we've actually developed not something that's drag and drop from Visual Studio. We've actually developed from scratch an actual event calendar that will be custom for the needs of, of this program. We have a two-way communication with our SQL database, as well as an, a one-click simple button to, to go through the entire campers list and automatically form groups. Very, very handy, very useful stuff. So at this time, we're going to go ahead and, and actually run through and show you what we have. So on initial load, you'll see we have a, a pretty cool splash screen. This login is actually referenced directly off, the SQL, off of a, the SQL database to ensure that no unauthorized access will, will be gained to the program, particularly because there's, a lot of, there's sometimes going to be some sensitive information. So we'll you just go ahead and log in as a, a typical user at the moment. Now when you're granted access, you're taken to our main window. And as you can see, there's four tabs uh, on the bottom here. You can toggle between them very easily. And up at the top, we have a menu bar as well as our toolbar. Now, the toolbar will, will change dynamically, dynamically based on what view you're in. And so, say for example, in the camper's view, then the buttons are going to interact specifically with the camper's view. Uh, the menu bar does exactly pretty much what the toolbar does, and you can see that there's certain options like logging out, exiting out of the program, uh, as well as some of those functions from the toolbar. Um, and then you can also toggle between the views, as you can see. So for example, say you're in the camper's view and you hit the add new button, then if you hit that, then it'll bring up a dialog where you can create a new camper, say call him Joe Dirt, and, uh, and he's in ninth grade, but he is unfortunately 18 years old still. And, uh, and so, He's male, and some of his roommate requests say he's, his, his roommate requests is Jonathan Anderson, and uh, Wesley Ball, and Sawyer Benson. So as, as you can see now, he's going to actually be in that list, Joe Dirt, and you um, can find him. And his requests are going to be pulled in. Now, 
he typed the name wrong, but it, uh, we actually have an algorithm that, that checks for spelling errors, and so it, it actually connected it to the Jonathan Anderson that exists in the list of campers. Now we're going to move on over to the groups tab. This is a little bit more of what I worked on. If you want to go ahead and hit the uh, run grouping button, the create group button, pops up dialog, do you want to go ahead and make your groups? Let's just go ahead, these are the default settings. So to create the groups, let's like this. It comes up with groups, it takes the total number of campers it has and divides that, of course, by whatever you want the size of the groups to be. See, it comes across, and we said we want a co ed group, so some of the groups are mixed in, males, females. So let's go ahead and run it. Let's run it again. And this time, let's change some of the preferences. Say, we want guy girl groups. Uh, you can change the size or leave it, it doesn't really matter. It's and then we come across with different groups now. Of course, now all the male groups are now just males. It will take it, sort it, and there will be no issue with that. Um, the people are first sorted by request. Like the people they request, they're more than likely going to get in their group. And then after that, it goes back and checks through their age and grade, depending on what you have selected. And if it's within one, one year or one grade level of the uh, average age or grade of the group, it'll go ahead and put them in that group as well if the group isn't full. As well, because we are basing this off of initially, primarily the user's requests, we need a way to develop a, a sort of way to, to compare the relationships. You have four slots, your first, second, third, and fourth choice. But how would you compare someone's first choice with another person's fourth? So we, we actually developed a, a modified way of using adjacency matrices to actually show these relationships in a, in a value-based system. So each individual camper has essentially their own individual adjacency matrix for who they're connected to with all weighted values that we've used a formula to calculate. Based off of this, from the grouping algorithm, we're actually able to quickly and easily sort these groups into what you see. As well, we also have a staff tab, again, to manage the, the staff that you have available uh, to be able to track just in general who is even coming what position they have, uh, and, and what groups that they could be assigned to as a potential team leader or counselor for a group. Moving on as well, we also have, this is the schedule. Alright, so when the schedule tab is clicked, we have a fully customized monthly view calendar. When the calendar started up, we'll have the calendar start on the current month and have the current date highlighted in yellow. What you also see are the existing events that are coming straight from the database that are being loaded in. And if we click on one of them days, you'll see the information about that event. Now, if you wanted to add a new event, we can just click on any, any preferred day that you'd like. And we, when you click on it, the day view dialog box will pop up and you will begin. You'll start off by creating an event title. We could name this uh, football practice. <coughs> And we'll have football practice start time at 7 p.m. And we'll end it at 9 p.m. And for the group number, we can, we can leave that blank for now. Or we can add one. Uh, when you're done, you'll hit submit. That event will be added to the list. And the title of that event will be added to the day that you want it to be on. And from there, it will be in the database and you are set to go. As well, you can also change between months. You can see we have additional months here. And you can also go back. So you can see older content, uh, future content. Um, but moving forward as well, we also need some type of a, uh, some basic reporting features and functionality that we also baked into this. So from each of these modules, just as, as Simon mentioned earlier, the toolbar will adjust depending upon the view that you're on. So we actually have a button right here, as well as in the menu, that says output to file. So if we click it, output to file, for any of them, it will actually take and output all events from the database to a file with their information. This same process can actually be applied, so you can output all the same information for all of your staff, all the groups that have been made, as well as all your campers. So that way you get some, at least some basic reporting functionality. So you can actually see right here, we have a list of all the groups that we just made with all of their associated members. Uh, pretty basic at the moment, but you know, going forward, and this is actually the next thing we're going to talk about, 
is going forward, we have a lot of continued development strategies and ideas. We want to add in a space management module to be actually able to show how a, a camp site would actually work with housing requirements. As well, we want to make our reporting features a little more robust. As well, we, can, we want to continue our software customizability in that we want it to be able to be tailored and, and easily accessible from multiple clients. This software right now is really specifically tailored for our existing client, which is perfectly fine. But going forward, of course, we want to be able to have it be easily accessible from multiple people with multiple needs. At this time, we've been really grateful for your attention. We're very happy with what we have, and I'd like to open it up and, and uh, see if we have any questions or comments about Camp Plus. Yes, sir. Uh, if you go to the group tab. I see there are two ungrouped groups. Mm -hmm. um, is it intentional or? Completely intentional. Now these, as you can see, a lot of these people don't have, uh, don't have requests or maybe their requests didn't meet some of the criteria. However, and this is something we actually didn't show, but what you can actually do is you can come in here and through our, our add button, you can actually add people to the groups or remove them from the groups. So for instance, if you have someone in group nine and you want to take them out, you can ungroup them and then add in someone else. Now this is a mixed set. All of our female campers are going to be down here at the bottom. So you can actually add them into group nine. You can add in additional people. And there those people are now in that group in group nine that we just added. So now you can see those people that we put in group nine are now in group nine. So that's the intention of having the ungroup. There are going to be times where as a counselor you're not always going to want to have everything completely 100% automated. You're going to know that people have relationships outside of just what they put into the program. And you need to take that into consideration. Some people might not get along, or some people, you know, you might want to keep separated for other reasons. So that's why we kind of built that in and let that kind of stay. Any other questions? Uh, but my question was, why are there two ungrouped groups? One for male, one for female. Oh, right. All right. Yeah, so this one you can see. Because we ran it as a, a male-female uh, iteration. And so if we do the, the co-ed group, there will only one on group. Yes, Phil? Um, how many times did you guys meet with the client? Uh, we met, actually, Simon actually is, has worked with our client before, and so he's been our interaction with them, uh, kind of do, showing and dealing with what he has seen in the past. And so we kind of dealt a lot with Simon, and Simon then kind of relayed the information with uh, both Ben and Kate. So can you estimate about how many times you guys met? Uh, myself directly, I met Kate at the midterm and then of course today. So how many no. times how many times did you guys meet him and show him the product in whatever form it was in? I don't I don't remember what about, actually, what about yeah. descriptions. Just descriptions of how it is? Yes, just descriptions. So we did I mean this is this has been kind of a, a loose client relationship. Um, and I'll I'll admit that of course. Uh, but it's we've taken what what was given to Simon and, and run with it. So this is actually Ben's first time seeing a lot of this stuff. Uh, Kate's second time. So. But one thing that I can respond to in that regard is that because Simon has physically helped us run these camps, he knows it as well as we do as far as what our needs are. Gotcha. And so, so it, was, it, it was not a, that there was not, it was not a stone unturned in that regard. Okay. That's very good to be able to but, do but that. Thank you. you know, that, and that's what we exactly recognized. And going forward, then when we originally had this idea, we're like, oh, you know, Simon's already got this, you know, he's been there. And so we kind of, we're like, man, we already got a client, so we kind of ran with that. So. Um, were there any times that you were wrong? Excuse me? Thought, I'm talking to oh. Simon. Were there any times that you were wrong about something and you found out later maybe the camp worked a different way or the counselors wanted it to be a different way? No? No. All right, good job. He's confident. Yeah. There's a couple things that we had <laughs> that we a little bit misunderstood, yeah. but we, we sorted out pretty quick. Yes, sir. Uh, for the, when you're setting up accounts for this, do you have different views for administrators or for parents or for students and how, how do you set that up? Well, the, the intention is in this program to have multiple views. At the moment we don't have an administrator view, this is just a, a typical user view. The accounts are all set up in a SQL database table. The data is actually intended to be pulled directly from a live SQL server, which our client currently has. They collect information from a website, all that information gets put into, into a SQL database, and then we're going to be pulling that information from there. So this is kind of a, another way to interact with that data that they're already collecting. Um, I, I noticed uh, uh, one thing uh, when you when you did your uh, when you they mistyped the names and it automatically adjusted to the name uh, that was similar. Mm -hmm. 
Well, uh, what if it's true that there are two campers with similar names and how is there like a workaround for that? And I mean, what what if, there is? For I, example, if if two uh, people like John Smith both want to go to the camp, you know, what would happen in the database? Well, it also checks for age and grade. Now, if you have two John Smiths at the same age and the same grade, uh, no, it doesn't check for that directly. Um, it, but what it does do is you actually actually see we have. A couple people that are that have similar names. We have uh, both a Sawyer and a Samuel Benson. You can see right here. Now, what we have is actually a way to be able to differentiate between those two names. So we have to reach we have to reach a degree of, of an error limit so that there's enough gap to account for a, a misspelling, but at the same time, not be not allow for that error to be so large as to pull in a false positive. Okay. So and that's but that's what uh, we have our algorithm running and doing is so it'll it'll check for that. Yes, Dr. Uh, yes, yeah, so, yeah, right. two cool algorithms that one the name matching and two the group identification. Mm -hmm. So for the group identification, uh, I guess one, where'd you come up with the weights? And then two, do you have any idea how close to optimal the groups you find are based on those weights? Well, um, I can tell you as far as the how we come up with the weights, I have I have really, it, it was something that I kind of just worked out and it's a very iterative method. Uh, it's not that clean in terms of code. Uh, it's short and compact, but uh, it, it does what it needs to do. At the same time, however, as far as how these groups have come out, we actually had Simon go through and, and we compared them to existing groups and they actually match up pretty closely more often than not. The data that we used was actually real data from a camp that was ran last summer and the groups that were created for that camp was done manually and just going through and looking, okay, well this person requested this and just trying to put it together. And, and we did it fairly well and, and then comparing that data with, with what our program was able to do, it's, it's, it's fairly close, it's pretty cool. That's all the time we have, I'm afraid. Um, I'll be able to take more questions after this. Thank you so much for your time and attention. And like I said, we've been really proud of this product. It's Camp Plus, uh, Camp Management Utility.